And here we are with our Facebook broadcast on this Thursday afternoon, uh, four o'clock central time. I don't know if it's daylight savings or not. I really don't pay attention anymore at my age. I really don't care. I just know it's four o'clock because that's why I'm here. Cause if it was another time I wouldn't be doing this, but we do answer your home improvement questions here. I do it on the weekends on the radio and in Houston, Texas on sports radio, 610 for 35 years now, getting close to starting my 36 year, but not quite yet, not till October. But as far as that goes, I'm on the air from nine to noon on Saturday and Sunday, eight to 11. And we answer your home improvement questions there, but you can get them answered anytime, anywhere at homeshowradio.com. And also you can podcast the show and listen to it no matter where you are. And of course, Saturday mornings, because I don't do gardening. I don't give gardening advice. I am an amateur gardener. That is true. And I do enjoy it very much. So I listen to the garden pros before me from seven to nine on sports radio, six ten, And then I go on at nine o'clock till noon with your home improvement information, but they do a great job doing that. And of course I must introduce now da, 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 Charlie Mosier, who helps me out here and is the boss of all of Mosier media because it's yeah. Mosier media and his name is Charlie Mosier. So we know whose family he lives in. Or yeah, that's really right. his yeah. mom's business. <laughs> it is. It's, yeah. yeah it and, is. <laughs> and she pays me in oatmeal raisin cookies. It's a kind of like M- Mosier, uh, you know, the diner up in New Hampshire at one time. It's still his mom's No, it's business. actually, actually my mom's name is, is Lane because she remarried and, um, Oh. Um, and the restaurant was Grandma's Kitchen in Whitefield, New Hampshire, years ago. And then Grandma's Kitchen is still there to this day, even though that she sold out. And um, oh. and yeah. you worked there all night. I long. did. I did. <laughs> yes. Serving one summer, pancakes, Johnny one, cakes up there. Right? One summer in particular, I'll never forget. You know, when I worked yes. the Drunk Rush from uh, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. for the entire summer of my junior year in high school. Hey, that's how Taco Bell made it. And when they almost went bankrupt, then the drunk rush came in and they said, aha, aha. I saw a whole show about Taco Bell the other night. So it was we, we serve crappy food, but drunks <laughs> love it. <laughs> that's what happened. Aha, they were eating it up. <laughs> that's right. Well, you learn a lot, you know, like you know, never argue with a drunk and things like that when you're working that rush. So life goes on. But, but our purpose here today is not that because we know you're all clean and sober and full of home improvement questions. At least we know you. The third part is true. Well, now wait a minute, Charlie. It is Cinco de Mayo today. Well, and that's true. Texas and other areas. It's when the French got their butts kicked by the the Mexican army and the Mexican government, and they kicked them out of Mexico, which we're very appreciative of. And as far as that goes, uh, they don't celebrate it a lot. Uh, It's not really their Independence Day, but margaritas are five dollars at Applebee's. Kicking the the butt of the (laughs) French is not really. You know, it's like, no, tell me you did something difficult. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going there. They were, they tried to be our, you know, they helped us out in Revolutionary War. So they hey, did. We in helped fact, them out in World War II. So we're okay. We're even. In fact, even my, my, if you do the genealogy going back, you find yes. out that my family came across with Lafayette with the French to fight in the revolution. That's how well, Moger, my father. That's the French name. Sure. We. Right. Oui, that's how, yeah, that's how no. they came oh, over here. Yeah. I like it. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. And my grandmother came over from Edinburgh, Scotland, many years later. And my grandfather came from a little huh. island called Saba down in the... Anyway, so this is the benefit of having a Mormon <laughs> sister because she's done the genealogy going way back. <laughs> <laughs> so we and I am a bloodline Knights Templar, believe it or not. So I've right. done and I'm a too. Knights of Columbus. So you see, we got a lot well, in common, that's not right? Bloodline, there. but yes, that works. <laughs> okay, it's a good organization. All right. Oh boy! So this has got to be interesting to at least <laughs> yeah, I'm sure well, one of the three right or four in. people watching. So how about what's... a home improvement question? <laughs> I'm on to it. Let's get after it. We had, we answer questions to send to us to our uh, to our website, the Ask Tom section there at Home Show Radio. You click on the Ask Tom button, and you can either write us a question or you can send us uh, a video in it. And what always also helps is to send us pictures. You're not going to see those here on this segment, but if you do, that would be great, and we can include them. Uh, because we, Tom and I post new videos every day at uh, homeshowradio.com and over on our uh, here on YouTube. We, we try. And we post them occasionally on that other social media platform where we don't do the show anymore. Twitter? So, no. Did you see the new logo? It has a cowboy hat. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I just made that up. I love it. it is. I, I was surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised it doesn't have a little outlet on it now to plug it in with your Tesla. All right. 
Let's get to the questions. First question we have comes from uh, Debbie up in New York State. She says, I rent an above me, me head, she says, is a wall-mounted LG AC. I think it's probably one of those um, uh, mini split systems, Tom. It says it grows mm -hmm. black mold, and I find myself coughing and not feeling good. My, my landlord says it's not black mold. It's not the bad mold. So she has the good mold, Tom. Okay. I, I want to test it and he wants to know how should I do that? Should I buy some kind of mold kit test or mold test kit? And I, I really do feel sick and uh, they, they come and clean it with a cleaning cloth and stuff, but it comes back about three weeks later. What's your advice for Debbie? Well, I think the whole unit needs to be cleaned really well. And I think they need someone to come out and make sure that it's working properly. It's not over sweating. It doesn't have some kind of uh uh, breach in it where it's pulling in hot air that's helping this uh, kind of accentuating the the, mo uh, the the sweating and the water and, and that kind of thing. So the whole thing probably just needs a good cleaning and a good tune-up. But I want to go back to this mold thing because people freak out on it. Mold is not good for anybody. Mildew in huge amounts is not good for anybody. If you're sitting under an air conditioner that has black stuff all over it, it probably is not the healthiest thing for anybody, no matter what kind it is. Now, when you get into molds, you can get into some that are called penicilliums and stachybotrysses, and those are the ones where people are getting brain tumors and blood out of their ears and all kinds of weird stuff. Those are the really serious ones that people heard about that started from a housing complex. They found it in Cleveland, Ohio, believe it or not, where children were getting a... a brain uh, aneurysms and things from a heavy mold in a building. So that's how it got discovered, but it's a really rare form and it has to, has to have the perfect situation. And in this case, it's not gonna be like that. But any air conditioning system that does not work really clean and really work nicely can, can aggravate anybody that's got, it's sensitive to any kind of outdoor allergens, whether it's mold, pollen, uh, pollution of any kind. And so your air conditioning system should be running clean. It should be running clear without all kinds of growth on there and the humidity levels and stuff. It should not be uh, uh, making the problem if you have one worse or uh, contributing to a problem that you should not have. So I think the system needs to be cl cleaned up and, and, and fixed. It's not the kind of molds that you heard about in the past that were really very, very dangerous because it has to have cellulose to grow on and it's not in that air conditioning system, but it still can aggravate you and it still can make you feel uncomfortable and somewhat, you know, with nasal uh, issues and things like that. So the air conditioner needs some some attention. It's that whole bad versus good mold thing. Yeah, there's no such thing. Too much of anything is bad. And when, when somebody, when they do a test for mold, this mm -hmm. is a great way to put it because in Houston, we have a lot. We go outside, there's mold everywhere. So what they do is they do samples on the outside of the house. They do samples on the inside of the house. As long as the inside of the house has a lower acceptable level than the outside, you're okay. If it starts to get higher in the inside of the house than the outside, then they start to go into re remediation and where you have a problem. And uh, it, you can live in uh, New Mexico and there'll be almost zero. You can live in Houston and you're gonna have molds all over. And when people go outside during pollen season and stuff, it gets it really aggravates people, it makes some people very sick. Uh, sometimes I'm very sensitive to the cedar and to the to the oak pollen and things like that. But when you go in your house, your air conditioning system should not contribute to more of a problem. It should be running clean. So it might not be the reason you're sick, but it can make you contribute to even a, a greater symptom of, of a problem. Mm. Okay. Let's go to Daniel. He's got our next question for you, Tom. He's in over in Siena Plantation here in the Houston area. Uh, she says, my two-story house was built in 1976, and we want to install laminate flooring and get rid of the carpet. I started removing a piece of the carpet and noticed there's a two-by-sixes installed in, on the hallway and rooms upstairs instead of plywood decking. He says, do I need to put plywood on top of that, or can I install the laminate right across the two-by-sixes? If the, if the two by sixes, if they're a center match, which is a tongue and groove, which they probably are, and they're smooth, they're flat, and they're solid down where they're not, you know, loose and, and, and moving around, there's no reason that they can't go on there because that's how subfloors were made for years. So it's all about the condition of the subfloor. Now, if they're down well and there's some low spots and stuff, just like with plywood, you would go in with leveling compounds. And you would go ahead and have all those low spots filled in 
And that's what your floor prep is all about. And the people putting laminates down should explain that to you. And if there's moisture issues, you're going to have a certain underlayment that will go down uh, that's specific to the floor you picked and following those specifications for your warranty and for good results and good uh, performance on your floor. And then the laminate should go on top. So putting plywood down is not an end all. And it's probably something you don't have to do unless you have a structural problem with that, those two by sixes. I guess if they were going to be using the um, that um, vinyl, the L- LVP stuff, that would be more critical to having not having any kind of seams under there, I imagine. There's no doubt the seams. I don't know, though, if they would just float the floor or do the plywood. Uh, as you know, Charlie, with your own smaller project, you had that fl- floating floor compounds expensive, right? But how much is plywood today, too? Which one is it's going true. to be more cost effective for the homeowners. So that's that's really when, when and I'm just gonna do a quick plug for Texas Floors with Jason and Ryan here in Houston. Uh, that's why you get the experts in. They're gonna have to help you make those decisions. So it's not only best for the best way to go down, but best for your budget and the results you're looking for and things of that nature. I was talking to Ryan the other day from Texas Floors and with the vinyls that are going down, they're having some moisture issues and they're having to, to do super, uh, super uh, uh, vapor barrier underlayments now, which are letting no moisture through because they were getting some real problems with it. And so they're still trying to figure out some of the detail work on the vinyl. So it's not a, the best floor in the world for every situation either. Uh, better on wood than on concrete, but now they're having to put real visqueen down, real plastics, which in most cases you don't do in an area like Houston. But with this particular floor, that's what the manufacturer is mm. saying they have to do now. And they're laying it into a compound that's painted down. So it's getting to be quite the process in some areas. So you're saying that they put some sort of compound down and then the plastic onto it so it adheres to it? That's right. And then the plastic is is glued together with big overlaps. So it became uh, a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people who are having problems with the vinyls mm-hmm. on concrete because the moisture is being trapped in there and can't go through. My question is, is, is the, the plastic really going to work? I don't know, but when you, when you buy a floor from a manufacturer and they're paying for it all right now, the manufacturers, to have it changed, uh, you've got to follow their recommendations because that way they'll pay for it and they'll back it up. In fact, that is exactly what happened here. Um, in the office, uh, we, had, uh, we have some of that LVP, that vinyl, mm-hmm. floor, that vinyl plank floor, it looks like wood in our uh, lobby our conference room yeah and in our kitchen and we had some problems where it started separating and it was like it it got hot and it started separating and texas floors being one of our home show pros they would do this for everybody went to the manufacturer and they said yeah we'll replace all of it and so they came and pulled up all the floor and put down brand new and uh, we haven't had any problems since so that's why i was curious about this this moisture thing because we have it and uh, I know, but yours is on the second floor. If I if, if I'm no, correct, it's on right? the first floor. It's on the slab. Oh, okay. Downstairs. Then then it could have been it could have very well been something like that. No, uh, there's still what what happened was I'll tell you what happened yeah. was that they, there was a compound in the vinyl floor that there was a problem oh. with that shrank, oh. and when it did, it pulled the boards apart, and that's so it wasn't it wasn't a moisture issue with us, but I'm worried now that I. You know that we have moisture downstairs, I and mean, maybe I'll get a third. No, you've floor. been. I think yours is the test of time. I love to use that word. I think right. you're past that point. This happens pretty quickly, so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't worry. Don't don't lose any sleep. I don't want you okay. and Sandy freaking out. Yeah, yeah. That's no why freaking I love when out. you say. I say I love when you say that I'm the boss. You know, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. no well, Sandy, she boss. hears it, might want to get rid of that floor immediately. We need. That's exactly floor. right. Okay. All right. So, hey, by the way. Um, we're here live on YouTube. Um, well, we are right now. Yes, you may be watching this so. later. So kind of a paradox for you, an internet paradox. But we're here live. And if you want, you can go ahead and put your questions in the comments section if you want to ask Tom a question now. And we can answer it live for you here on the show. That's why we do it live. We could just as easily tape this thing and make it a much more convenient time for both of us. But we want to help you we out. Could. And so go ahead and you can add your questions and we'll answer them for you. So let's get to the next one we have from the Ask Tom box. And this one comes from Robert in the Woodlands. He says, we're installing a new HVAC systems and they have media filters where our current system uses the one inch filters and at the returns. We have two dogs and they shed. Um, By removing the wall filters, should I be concerned with pulling their hair into the ducts and filtering it at the unit instead of using 
wall filters and keeping the hair and other dust out of the ducts. What say you, Tom? First off, I say use the media filter. But this is an interesting uh, question because I want you to use a one inch filter too. And I usually don't say that and most air conditioning contractors won't. But I wanna put a real caveat on that. I don't want you to use the good ones. I want you to use the old polyester uh, fiber ones that are really loose because I want you to collect the hair. I, and you got to replace it regularly. Don't wait six months and have a furry thing growing on there. Replace it every 30 days if you've got a lot of hair, because I don't want all that hair getting in all the ducts, although it will be stopped before it gets in the air conditioning system. But this is the one time since you have uh, return airs and hopefully they're big enough. You can check with your technician to make sure it's big enough. But don't use the MERV 8s or the MERV 6 pleated filters for those one inch. Don't think thicker and you're going to catch all the particulates. All I want you to do is use the really cheap, inexpensive polyester ones just to collect all the hair. As far as the other stuff, let it go through and into the media filter and it'll do its best job. But that's what I would do if it was me and I had big dogs with lots of hair. But you want to make sure you have enough uh, return air size to do that. And hopefully you do. It does. It wouldn't be that big of a deal with the polyester filters. You're talking about the rock catchers, the ones you can see through. Yeah, you can. You, yeah, you can see right through it. But it'll. If you have a, a long-haired dog, I mean, it's or if people had hair at all, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I know it goes everywhere. Uh, I have a wife that has hair, and it's all over the place. So, <laughs> are you? Are you like? <laughs> I'm hoping I'm hoping Sam well, is not watching the show today. I or... want people to realize that I do understand hair, even though I don't have any, because I still have drains and stuff that I've had to clean hair out of. Yeah. It's just not mine. Yeah, we have um, now we have okay. a husky. <laughs> there you go. Yep, that's a shedding dog. And well, you uh, know that they say, you know how you know a happy person? He's got dog hair on his pants. That's true. And Nika, <laughs> you know, it's funny because we have a husky, Nika, who is, she's, yeah. she's kind of, we call her a cat dog because she'll spend, she loves, she gets real loving with you. And then I've had enough, leave me alone. Good. But the it's black lab, dog. our black lab has this oh. thing where if he knows you're wearing pants fresh from the dry cleaners, he wants to give you a little <laughs> nose stamp before you go. He wants people to know there's a black lab in your life. And so whenever I get ready for work in the morning, I'm always careful to avoid the dog, get out of the house. So I don't take yeah, you realize when kids are small and they try to wipe their noses on their mom's shirts and stuff, that's all the dog's doing. He's yeah. wiping his nose on your pants because well, you're the we, daddy. <laughs> and I don't want Teddy to be, I don't want Teddy feeling left out. So our little uh, Labrador. Whoever that is. It's our, our little Labradoodle. He's, um, oh. he's a year old. He's got a lot of puppy in him, but. That's a hypoallergenic dog. He doesn't shed at all. So anyway, and he shouldn't for the price he costs. <laughs> yeah, no anyway. kidding. Okay. Fine. That dog should be, that's your car dog should be washing and waxing my he car. Should be washing, should be combing your other dogs. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's it. There's a job. I'll see if I work on that. All right. Yeah, One more. On Got another question here. This is Marshall in Spring Branch. He says, I have an old house in which all the plumbing is that half inch galvanized pipe. I think we can figure out when this house was built. Is there a company in Houston that cleans the rust out of these pipes? I know this is kind of a softball for you, so I'll let you run the ball, Tom. Yeah, and I think we always tell you, go to homeshowradio.com, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You'll find all of our certified home pro show pros. And when you find the one that's called TDT, uh, they're the ones that have what's known as the ACE Duraflow system. The ACE Duraflow system is a system that is designed to do exactly that from drying the pipes out to sandblasting them to lining them with a micro thin layer of epoxy and bringing them back to even better the new condition that will last even longer uh, than they did when they were new coming off of, out of the steel mills uh, so because and the reason is is the water never touches the pipe just to give it a kind of close that thought because that's where all the corrosion happens and you'll be good to go so give them a call all right yeah in fact they have uh two systems they have the aster flow they have their e-pipe they also do pecs. So, and there are cases I've seen where Gary- For pipe guys, replacement, not just right. cleaning, yes. Right, right. But I'm just saying that there are play times when, you know, we've seen them. And there's a video at homeshowradio.com. If you go there and mm -hmm. check it out on the TDT page, you can go down and find it. And that's where all their videos are. But uh, where they couldn't, the the pipe was too far gone. And Did so they they, they put in, what do you call manifolds or whatever? Or they And they transitioned from- 
the, yeah, you the, can you can splice in pieces because sometimes those pipes and it's always on the bottom of it. They get so thin walled that you can replace sections and it's usually a horizontal section that will be in the attic. Those are the ones that take the biggest beatings if it gets to be the, that far along. If it's not, it's not going to happen after they're done with it. So it'll stop the process. So your pipes will be they, they figure a 75 year life with a 10 year full warranty on the thing. Right. And, and it's an amazing system. And the yeah. advantage is that they don't punch holes in your wall. If you're going to repipe, you're going to have yeah. holes and painting and all that. I think they go in through like taps, right? Don't they go in through like they go the into underneath the sinks. They go into the shower uh, uh, mm -hmm. valve. They go right into the accessible areas. Even the water heater, they go right into the pipes that go into the water heater. Mm -hmm. And uh, they so the advantage is this. Number one is you don't tear your house up. It's only a couple of three days and you're done. You can get right back into it. Everything's in place. Nothing's been moved. Uh, they're all cleaned up. They do replace and put in new stops and things underneath the sinks where you have the new valves. So you get that part of it too. And they'll explain all that to you. And the reason, the, the final thought, the reason is you don't hear it from other plumbers is the fact that the other plumbers don't have access to that uh, proprietary system uh, they never decided to buy it or buy into the buy into it. And uh, TDT's had it since day one and the original people in Houston. Other companies have, have done it and they kind of got out of it and they just went back into plumbing service or the companies, you know, went out of business because, you know, they decided to close up, whatever. But TDT has been strong with it and has some great track record and some really cool projects they've done that's just not homes, which is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. But multifamily, they've done oil rigs, they've done all kinds of crazy stuff with it. It really works. They they are among the pioneers of this technology. Yeah. So it is. Um, they're I they're like really that. if there's anybody you want to have to do it, it's them because uh, the the manufacturer goes to them and asks yeah. them to test things because they trust Gary. Gary. Gary is actually, I, I think he's a, uh, uh, his his background is in um, chemistry or, or something, isn't it? Because he, he you can give him a piece of pipe and he can tell you just by looking at it, he knows the chemical break makeup of it, its origin and all that, going all the way back to the very origins of the of the material in the pipe. He's, he's, a, it, he's a bright young man, that is true. He's a bright man. He is. <laughs> yeah, <okay, fine. laughs> right. I like him. Yes. We can, you know, that's the beauty of being our age. We can call everybody a kid, but we can't call Gary. Everybody, I'm always the oldest man in the room now. <laughs> yeah. For those who know, I'm, I'm going to be 64 in August. And, you know, some of them are like 60, 61, but I always am the top dog now. <laughs> it seems yes. to be. For three months a year, three or four months a year, Tom and I are the same age every year. Yes, so, that's true. Because <laughs> I'll be 63 at the end of this month. So, all right, uh, let's get to our last question here. This one comes sure. from uh, Keith. And it's actually interesting what we were talking about earlier about the flooring and how whether it's cheaper to put down plywood or the leveling compound because of how much prices have gone up. Keith's question yeah. is, he says, um, with are the energy rates going to go up until... The, with the oil situation, it makes solar a viable option. Well, solar is not going to be a viable option anytime in the near future, especially the way it's being sold and marketed today. And I don't want to get into it all because it just it, it gets it gets me a little too hot under the collar. So be careful of that. And secondly, we're going through a strange time in the country where everything is high priced. I know we're going through all of this. Don't invest. 30 or 40 or $50,000 right now in anything, especially with when you have to finance it and put a lien on your home. And because your payback of 25 or 30 years is not going to happen either. And just a quick example on the solar panels themselves, they're warranted for 15 years. They only last 12. So you have to replace them in 12, but your, your loan will go for 25 or 20. And you have to buy their solar panels to get the new panels put on. So the system continues to work, which are, would be tens of thousands of dollars and your warranty and your and your loan and everything is still in place. It gets to be a problem that you're never going to catch up with. So don't get into that at all. Now, I will say this, that being the oil industry, I think, is is starting to gear up because of things happening in the world and Europe needing energy and other parts of the of the world needing energy. And 
Uh, my son's in the energy business and he tells me, Dad, I know it sounds bad with the news and everything, but the quick po politics stuff is going to change. But uh, the oil industry is actually gearing up and starting to go because of all this crazy stuff going on throughout Europe and in and, and Western Europe, I guess you should say, and things like that. So mm -hmm. I would not invest anything right now. What I would do is just sit and not worry about your home and your energy costs. They'll fluctuate a little bit, but I don't think they're going to going to go outrageous. Mm -hmm. Give me a second here. I'm having a little technical issue here with my camera and okay. I don't know why. Give me a second. But yeah. I'm on. <laughs> yes, you are. But for some reason, I'm frozen. And I don't know why. Okay. And a really flattering pose. At the, oh, at that, I like too. the pose. No, hey, I you like that, that one even that better. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, it. And I don't that. know what uh, what to do and how to fix that. So you know what that picture is that I'm going to put a caption. What are those guys doing this weekend that are producing the show? Are they sleeping? Yeah, right. Or what you, oh, no, <laughs> now we got something else. What is yeah, that? now okay. it's yeah. No, for some reason <laughs> yeah. it's not going to work. All right. so. I caught you. I see you on camera. You're sleeping. I don't know. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. So <laughs> I do have a backup camera. So we'll just go to that one here and, and we'll okay, just use this for the rest fine. of the show. Oh, there so you that's kind of weird. Good. I don't know what the deal is with that. So anyway. anyway uh, see, we have, we just, have backups. <laughs> yeah. And, and don't do anything with your energy bills right now, except normal stuff you would do anyway. Right. Okay. But that's going to mean that every time I change this, I'm going to have to change it because of the way the system I'm works. So, so we're sorry. just going to stay on this shot for a minute here. Um, but it's yeah, okay. You look good. Um, we were, this past week, I was uh, on, you know, we weren't on last week because I was on a little one of my, right. every couple, every two or three it's times fun. a year, I go on these photo trips when I travel with photographers. Getting and, more and more, but so is mine because we're getting images. older. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this one, one more time. Yes. This one, I went up to a place called uh, the Palouse up in Washington State. And um, which is right down near the Idaho, but it's like Coeur d'Alene, just on the other side, kind of like Spokane, Coeur d'Alene down in that triangle. That's where the, where the Palouse is. Well, Tom, as I'm leaving, as we're pulling out of the town of Palouse, there's they've on the side, they've got this this rack of all these solar collectors on the side of the hill and a sign on there that says the city of Palouse, 98 kilowatt solar array. 98 kilowatts. Yes. So what does that mean? Not well, much. I'm just saying it's 98 kilowatts. And I'm thinking <laughs> yes. that's like half what my home generator puts out. Uh, that's twice what, what my home generator puts out. Yours puts yeah. out a third of that. So I'm thinking, what are they lighting with 98 kilowatts? Well, they have a light and they have a computer or maybe a television. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I know they're very yeah. proud of it. And in some parts of the world, like you go up into Washington State in the mountains and stuff, you don't have anything else. It's either that or you're going to have squirrels on a little cage going right. on. Right, right. Uh, they exactly. don't have access to the grid, so what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how big their sun is out there, but still, they, it's all for show right now. It doesn't make sense unless you're doing commercial buildings, and then we get into different, different aspects of it where it does make sense, school systems and things of that nature. Yeah, that's the weirdest thing. So I know. anyway, I was up. Oh, I was trying to fix the other camera. And now it's in the way. There you go. <laughs> he is all busy. All right. All right. Anyway, so Let's say goodbye. That's gonna that's gonna do it for today, and yes. we're gonna reboot and figure out what the hell's going on with this thing. But this is this is a new undocumented feature of our uh, production software, where it will every now and then make me look like this. I thought I was frozen, <laughs> but I was just still. I like that. You need to keep that. Hey, yeah. Uh, I think I'm just gonna make this my Facebook picture from now on. Yeah, yeah. you need to put that like in the that. studio when those guys are working. All right. What are you doing? So anyway, so Tom will be on the. Let's let's wrap this up and talk about you on the radio. Yeah, that's nice, Tom. Tom okay, on the fine. radio this this weekend. I will be sitting right here this weekend from Saturday from nine to noon, answering your questions here at Sports Radio six ten down here in Brownsville, Texas, where I'm working these next next two weeks down here before I go back to Houston, and on Sunday also I'll be here sitting in the same chair, same place from eight to eleven on Sunday, and don't forget my garden friends. They come on Saturday morning from 7 to 9. There they are, the garden pros. Over most of this same, over most of Sports Radio 610. All right, I'm Charlie. He's Tom. We will be back again next. We will be again here next Thursday, another two yep. weeks in a row. Yes. Back here with another one of these, and we'll see if we can get this guy back here again <laughs> next. Got a question. Ask Tom on Home Show. from a pro who knows home show radio home show, home show. Home show.
Don't you? 